Hey, what up, man? It's your boy David Lucas right back at you, man. Uh, I got another article, but before I do that, make sure you hit that Patreon up. Patreon.com slash David Lucas to get all that exclusive footage. But we got an article today, man. Uh, so BLM, you know, a couple of days they came out. Uh, well, it came out uh, showing that uh, they got another $6 million mansion. So now they're trying to defend the purchase of the $6 million California home. We definitely got to see this. Let's see what the hell they talking about. So Black Lives Matter, uh, they defended their secretive purchase of $5.8 million on a Southern California home. And guess what? They bought it with all the donations. They said they were trying to increase transparency while still providing little detail about the eyebrow raising acquisition. So pretty much Black Lives Matter is trying to uh, say they're going to be transparent about them buying a $5.8 million home in Southern California. It's actually in the Studio City neighborhood, which is a neighborhood I used to live in. It's uh, it's in the, I say like the lower, most Southern part of the valley is right over the Hollywood Hills. Very nice area. You gotta have a decent amount of money to live there. It's very clean, but also uh, during the pandemic, it started getting a little, you know, sketchy. You started seeing more tents and they weren't really patrolling it like they used to. But all in all, it's still like a nice area. It's the area where uh, Mac Miller died. So there's a lot of nice homes over there. So the full title, BLM, GNF, Black Lives Matter, Global Network Fund. Uh, they turned off replies on Twitter. When people turn off replies or a way for you to comment, that lets you know. They doing some stuff they ain't got no business doing. Listen to the dimensions of the house. The house, the house is 6,500 square feet. It's in Studio City, like I said earlier. It has seven bedrooms, seven bathrooms, a sound stage, a music studio, a pool, and parking for 20 cars. Shell bought it back in 2020 secretly, uh, and then it was confirmed that it was connected to the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. You can't hide anything. Even if you buy it in a business name, you can't hide it. Why is it that everybody that has something to do with Black Lives Matter continues to buy mansions? BLM, buying large mansions. BLM, buying lavish mansions. That's what the hell it stands for. And you people donating money should be fed up. You know how y'all protest when a white person kills a black person? That's the only time it matters for BLM. Y'all should be protesting at these people's multi-million dollar houses. I know if I would have gave a single dollar to Black Lives Matter, I would be over there protesting right now. I'd be like, I donated money to BLM. I deserve to stay here. You got seven bedrooms. I'll sleep in the music studio. And I'm using your pool for a cookout. That's what I would say. So the crazy part about it is they were not going to just come out and say, we bought another mansion. Actually, the New York Post obtained property records and it confirmed that the mansion was purchased by Diane Pascal, a local real estate developer with links to BLM. She closed the deal on October 27, 2020. This is during the time when people were still up in arms about George Floyd. See how they take advantage? They take advantage of situations for their profit. And as a black person, I'm saying FBLM as an organization. Black lives do matter, but not BLM the organization. This house is nice. It looks like the Home Alone house. So... They tried to uh, defend their purchase of the house. So here's the thing. There's so many black neighborhoods in Los Angeles. This Black Lives Matter organization could have went and bought houses. You could have, and Studio City is a predominantly white neighborhood. You could have moved to any black neighborhood. Why is it that you don't want to be near the people that you're standing up for? Why do you want to go live next to your so-called oppressors? 
That's that's what I don't get. You so terrified of white people and you put everything on white people and you make sure you magnify when a white person kills a black pe- person, but you still go and buy a house in a white neighborhood. That that don't, that don't sound right to me. So let's see. There uh see Black Lives Matter know how to play corporate games. So after the lady bought the house, Days later, it was transferred to a Delaware limited liability company, a.k.a. LLC, which is controlled by the foundation. Last June, three BLM leaders, co-founder Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza and Melina Abdullah, recorded a video outside the secretly bought home while marking the first anniversary of George Floyd's murder. If that ain't a slap in the face. Is George Floyd's family in a mansion? His family should sue them. They came up off of his murder. It's so. These people have bought many mansions off of George Floyd's name. And that is not right at all. That's. Man, listen, I hope George Floyd hunt that house. I ain't even gonna lie. Crazy part about it is. Uh. Patrice Colors, after she bought the house, she said that she was in survival mode. After she purchased four high-end U.S. homes, totaling $3.2 million, she said she's in survival mode. How are you in survival mode when you have $3 million in assets? And we all know real estate appreciates, especially in this market. How are you in survival mode? I've been in survival mode. I lived in a single studio in Koreatown with no air condition, paying seven fifty a month, all utilities included, back in 2011, 2012. Survival mode is when I had to eat hot dogs and ramen noodles every day. You don't sound like you in survival mode. You sound like you in flourishing mode. You sound like you have a surplus. Oh, yeah, I'm in survival mode. I, uh... I can't shop at Whole Foods. I got to go shop at Trader Joe's. No more soy milk. I'm going to do oat milk. I'm surviving. So Black Lives Matter, uh, they went on to say that narratives like this cause harm to organizers doing brilliant work across the country. And these reports do not reflect the totality of the movement. That's crazy to say because... You're saying a few people don't make a whole organization a whole. You're saying a few people don't make a whole organization bad. But yet you try to make the single actions of a few white police officers try to make a whole race of people bad. Anyway, uh, you see these ladies down here uh, eating. <laughs> This is survival mode for them. They got 13 sandwiches on that table and they're drinking mimosas with a bottle of champagne. They're in survival mode. That's survival mode right there. They can't drink tequila. They have to drink champagne. We apologize for the distress that this has caused our supporters and those who work in service of black liberation daily. It continued. We also recognize the confusion. Recent inflammatory and speculative articles have caused, the group said. The foundation also vowed to unveil new initiatives in the coming weeks to increase transparency and accountability and to continue reshaping what radical philanthropy uh, looks like for black people. BLM wrote on Twitter. What radical philanthropy? That's what I want to know. You can't speak for all black people. You just said that earlier that the actions of a few individuals uh, don't make the whole organization bad. So as black lives matter, you can't speak for all black people. You can't speak for me. I ain't came to the mansion. I ain't been invited to no cookout. I ain't came to no fish fry. I ain't came to no Sunday brunch over there in studio city. That's 15 minutes for me. Where my invite at y'all need to have a conversation with me and a couple of other people. I need to see where the money going. Y'all, They said the purchase was made so that it could encourage black 
creativity, saying it is necessary and vital to black survival. That's almost disgusting to hear. That is all. I hope everybody <laughs> asks for their money back. <laughs> Anybody who donated to Black Lives Matter should be able to come there, throw a party there, uh, rent it at a discounted rate if they want to have anything at this mansion. This was not used to encourage black creativity. This was used to encourage selfishness. It was selfish. And they continue to write some more stuff. Uh, BLM has always held that tradition sacred, partnering with artists of every kind since our founding. Uh, that's why the creator's house was purchased to provide a space for black folks to share their gifts with the world and hone their craft as they see fit under the conditions that work best for them and outside systems of oppression and creative industries. The group said, what this was bought to condition them to work outside of a system that oppresses them in a majority white neighborhood. So why is it not in Inglewood? Why is it not in South central? Why do you not want to, why do you, any, any kid that lives in studio city is doing well. Why do you not want to encourage uh, the lower income houses? Why do you not want to encourage the lower income kids? Why not put it in Inglewood? Why not put it in South Central? Why not Long Beach, Compton, Linwood? There's so many areas where you could have built an actual compound if you really wanted to encourage black creativity. So many. BS. If you want to continue to support Black Lives Matter, do it. Uh, I can't tell you how to spend your money, but there's no way I'm supporting an organization that is outright spitting in my face. Nobody is going to capitalize off of the murder of another person on my dollar. You can put all the George Floyd statues you want. You can make all the George Floyd days you want, but for them to buy mansions and post a video in front of it one year after the man's murder, it's just outright disgusting. I don't doubt. I don't doubt that there are some people that may have a pure heart that work with the Black Lives Matter organization, but they're probably small. My boy Trey B. N. Uh, Trey the Truth down in Houston is a big Black Lives Matter supporter. I don't know if he's directly linked to BLM, but I know his heart is pure. So one of the first, you know, big Black Lives Matter uh, acquisitions was uh, Michael Brown. They used, you know, his murder by the police officer to really gain some steam. And uh, people that are in Ferguson are actually demanding $20 million from Black Lives Matter. Let's let's we're going to add this to it. Let's read this right quick. So the father of Michael Brown, you remember he was killed. They are demanding financial support from Black Lives Matter after the organization revealed it raised over $90 million last year. Uh, Michael Brown Sr., who is Michael Brown's father, his son was fatally shot by a white police officer in August 2014. Uh, along with the other activists that were in the area, he helped propelled the whole movement. That's kind of like what got him off the ground. He wants $20 million from the group so that they can help the community. He's asking, where is all the money going? He had a, a press release on Tuesday uh, from the International Black Freedom Alliance. He said, how could you leave the families who are helping the community without any funding? Y'all remember how crazy it was when Michael Brown got shot? There was unrest in Ferguson. And that's what helped solidify the Black Lives Matter movement. It was chaos. It was I don't think it was as big as the uh, George Floyd thing because we were on lockdown. Um, but the Ferguson thing was out of control. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think. I ain't being swindled. That's all I got to say. 